I'd like to talk about keyboard maintenance. Not that kind of keyboard. This kind of keyboard. If you keep it clean and dry, a good keyboard should last many years. But keyboards do get dirty and sometimes they even get wet. That is when trouble begins. Let's start with basic keyboard cleaning. The best time to clean your keyboard is when it's disconnected or before you boot your computer. The first step is to turn your keyboard over and knock the chunks out. Not that anybody would ever, ever have chunks in their keyboard, but sometimes people eat at their computers and stuff can get down in there. So just a simple tap loosens up most of the debris. Canned air can also be used to remove loose particles and dust from the surface of the keyboard. A soft cloth or other type of dust rag can be used to get in between the hard to reach places and knock some of that dust loose. A soft vacuum brush can also be used to suck up dirt. If you use a wireless keyboard, you want to check the battery compartment if it has replaceable batteries. Make sure that the contacts are clean. If the contacts have gotten corroded due to poor batteries or old batteries, you can use a cotton swab and vinegar to clean that corrosion off. You can also use baking soda and a little bit of water to help clean that up. In really bad cases of corrosion, you might want to use a light abrasive to sand away the corrosion and get down to some fresh metal. This will create good contact and help your wireless keyboard operate properly. Here's the real reason you're watching this video. You spilled something on your keyboard. It may be a nice sticky soda pop, or it might be water. A little water spilled on your keyboard isn't a big deal. Oh, all you need to do is quick sop it up with a Kleenex. Ah! As I was saying, just sop it up with a Kleenex. Make sure that you get as much as you can. Dry it up. Water isn't that big of an enemy to your keyboard. It is an enemy. You don't want your keyboard wet. Um, make sure to clean up as much water as you can. Tip it over. Knock out the water and let it dry. Plain water on your keyboard is not that big of a deal. More than likely, no damage will be caused. Make sure that the keyboard is dry and continue to use it. If something else is spilled on your keyboard, such as coffee or potentially a sticky soda pop, that's an issue. The sticky gets down in there, the coffee gets down in there, it can affect the contacts, he's will stick down, they'll stick up. It's just a mess. In that case, what we need to do, unplug your keyboard, turn it over, and see all these screws? Yep, they have to come out. The screws on this keyboard are not all the same size. When I take them out, I place them in order so when it's time to put them back in place, I know where the long ones go and where the short ones go. Now that all of the screws have been removed, we can separate the top from the bottom. Here's the important electronics part. Here, not so important, pieces of plastic. This is the top of the keyboard. This is what's going to be all sticky and wet for the most part. The membrane may also be wet. This can be cleaned, not a problem. This can also be cleaned, but is much more of a problem. We don't really want to clean this if we can avoid it. This is going to be sticky. This comes off simply. Just lift it up. It's kind of a rubbery kind of plastic. We can clean that. If the liquid has gotten down into the contact area, this can be a problem. It can be clean, but with much more care taken. This rubbery membrane can easily be cleaned with plain water. Rinse it off, wipe it down, make sure that it's dry. More than likely, just the top will need to be cleaned. If you do need to clean the underside, again, make sure that it is dry once you're done. If you need to, just let it sit out. The water will evaporate. The rest of the keyboard is mainly plastic, with a few exceptions, such as the springs underneath some of the larger keys, such as the spacebar, potentially the shift keys and the enter keys. Those longer keys will have little uh, springs underneath them to help them move up and down straight. Anyway, plastic. 
go put it in the utility sink. Scrub this bad boy down if you need to. Get lots of water on it. Flush that gooey orange juice off of here. Once you've gotten it cleaned up, and if you need to, use a scrub brush. I have literally used a scrub brush on keyboards. I reclaimed some keyboards from a veterinary clinic. There was dog hair and cat hair down inside, underneath all of these keys. It was a mess. If you need to clean underneath these keys, they can be popped off fairly easily and then reinserted. Make sure that you put them back in the standard QWERTY order. Once you're done scrubbing the keyboard clean, it's important to get it dry. You can shake it, you can pat it down with a towel, you can take your canned air, spray the water out of it, and you can just let it sit. Let it sit for a day or two. Shake it occasionally. Make sure that it's dry. Once it's dry, once your membrane is dry, reassemble the keyboard. Putting the membrane back in place, fairly simple. There's many register points where the screws come through and other pins go through. This will help you get the membrane back in place properly. Make sure that's all lined up. Next thing, put the keyboard back in place. Once the pieces are all placed back together, go to your screws and screw them in. Now that all the screws are back in, it's time to give this keyboard a try. Okay, let's get this keyboard plugged in and see what happens. Okay, that's a good sign. The LED light came on here. Now, let's see if we can do any typing with it. Okay, looks like it's working. Good job. There may come a time that your keyboard no longer meets your needs. Ah! When purchasing a new keyboard, make sure that the key layout is what you're used to. Make sure that the feel is good. Keyboards come in a large price range. You can spend just a few dollars or you can spend hundreds of dollars. Thank you for watching my video, Zen in the Art of Keyboard Maintenance. I hope you're able to glean some little bits of information or some little tidbit that will help you and your keyboard.